Hello everybody. Welcome to Elite Dangerous Horizons. If you are watching this video, it's because you have just got the game and you are looking for information on how to play it and especially get around in your first hour. Um, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Northern Devo, at least in the forums, and uh, I'm a fairly long time player, although far from one of the top players in here. Um, and in a former career, early in my flying career, in real life, I served as a flying instructor. Um, it is for that reason, because I love to teach, uh, that a couple of months ago I got myself a uh, alt or an alternate character and uh, placed him in the um, PFZ, or that's the uh, Pilots Federation Zone, in order to help uh, first-time players, you know, uh, give advice, uh, show them how to do things, and quite frequently shoot other players off their tails uh, if uh, some players are getting a little bit frisky. <laughs> it's fun. At any rate, with the inundation of uh, new players that we've had recently, uh, because um, for a limited time, this game is being offered for free on Epic's, uh, well, Epic Store. Um, a lot of people are asking a lot of questions. And, uh, you know, they're all asking the same questions. Now, it's kind of a basic fact when it comes to instruction that if many students are asking the same question, then it's because that question is not being covered in the uh, instruction materials. So I thought I would do up this video to show you the basic, basic, basics of how to play this game. I'm not going to be going into any detail, just the basic principles of how to play the game and what to do in your first hour. All right, uh, we are going to make two assumptions. The first is that you have completed the tutorial. Uh, when you first start the game, you will be taken immediately to the tu tutorial and let the guy that's totally not an Imperial, uh, Theo Acosta, talk you through how to move your ship around. As tutorials go, it's excellent, but it leaves out a lot, so I'm going to fill in the details here. I'm going to show you a couple of settings to uh, make changes in your game to make it an a little bit easier and more understandable. And uh, I'll basically just going to let you follow along with me as we play the first mission and uh, the first couple of actions you will take in the game. Now it's important to understand that you're going to be starting in the PFZ or the Pilots Federation Zone. This is a system of 10 planets that are locked off from the rest of the galaxy. I'll explain a little bit more in, in a minute, but at the moment, in the systems that you're in, you are safe from um, gankers. In other words, better pilots with uh, stronger ships that like to kill newcomers. Why they do, I have no idea. Where's the fun in that? But they do it. At any rate, let us start. Okay. At the screen that you will be taken to when you finish the tutorial. Welcome to the Pilots Federation. You'll notice that up in the top right here, it's a six step process and it leads you right through it. Welcome to the Pilots Federation. Please register your name. Now it's important to understand, choose your name wisely because unless you start your uh, character again, you won't be able to change your name. So choose something that um, you'll like and you can stick with. In this case, my name on the forums is Northern Devo, so I'll use that. And I'll spell it right this time. <laughs> Under body type, select male. Although in some games like, Ma like Mass Effect, I uh, do enjoy playing female characters. They're a lot of fun to watch from behind. You never heard me say that out loud. Anyway, carrying on, continue. Select your package. You get to choose a Sidewinder or a Sidewinder. Now this is the ship here on the right that you would get if you didn't have Horizons. It just basically has two guns, two um, small gimbaled pulse lasers. So does this one. 
but it also has uh, a setup for planetary ops. In other words, it has a vehicle bay and an SRV, or a surface recon vehicle, called a Scarab. It's the better deal. Let's take that. And this page shows you a little bit about the stats. It's top speed, it's boost speed, it's shields, it's armor. Uh, this is by far the slowest, weakest, and most fragile ship in the game. It's also one of the most fun to fly. Uh, the Sidewinder is a ton of fun. Uh, it can go into places where no other ship can, and it's just a joy to fly. So don't worry about it that it's the weakest ship. And also don't be too quick to get out of it. Um, you can learn a lot flying the Sidewinder. Anyway, carrying on. Continue. Choose a name for your ship. Unlike your commander, you can choose, uh, you can change names at any time. And so just choose something. Right now I'll just pick something out of the air. Yes, I'm the type of person that thinks that's funny. And for the ID plate, I'm just going to, um, you know, pick a um, uh, plate of one of my uh, favorite aircraft that I like to fly. Alf Quebec Victor. That was a uh, Cessna 172 that I uh, started to fly back, oh god, over 30 years ago when I was first getting my pilot's license. And uh, she was a lovely little ship. Um, destroyed an engine fire a few years after I flew her, unfortunately, but uh, she was terrific. Anyway, carrying on. Here is your pilot's license. Okay. Here's your name, Sidewinder, your nameplate. If everything is good, hit confirm. If you want to change anything, go back. But it's all good, so. Now, Acosta is going to talk at us for a couple of minutes. Let's just listen to him. Welcome to your new ship, Commander. Your pilot's Federation license has been issued, and you're free to traverse the galaxy as an independent pilot. Before launching for the first time, allow me to quickly introduce the basic interface for mission contracts. Almost all pilots will use the mission board at some stage. A contract has been assigned to you. Active missions are displayed in the Transactions tab of the External Interface Panel. This time you'll need to travel to Mawson Dock in the Dromi system. You can select these destinations on the navigation screen of the external interface panel. If you'd like to practice your journey first, I recommend the training simulations accessed via the internal interface panel. To review what we've discussed, select your comms panel and scroll through the recorded text. I'll contact you at Mawson Dock if you decide to complete this mission. If you choose to take a different path, then I wish you luck, Commander. I swear, if that guy was any more imperial, he'd have blue hair. Anyway, <clears throat> this is where you start after you have uh, had your uh, pilot's license assigned and you've completed the tutorial. Always, always do the tutorial, guys. I can't stress this enough. There are a bunch of tutorial missions that I'll show you how to play in uh, subsequent videos. But for right now, always do the tutorial and you'll wind up right back here. I do have an advanced HUD, I have cleared it and just brought up the default HUD. So everything that I have on my screen is exactly the way you will have it. So the idea of this video is you can basically pause it and follow along as I fly uh, this first hour of the game. Now before we do anything, I am going to suggest a couple of changes that you make to your uh, control settings. and. I'm going to assume that you are using a keyboard and mouse or a joystick and a keyboard. A lot of people use a controller too. I can't really help you there because I don't use a key, uh, controller myself. But by doing this, by following along, you will at least be able to find how to change your settings. So then we do it by going to Escape and going to what in most games is called the pause menu. You are not paused in this game. Don't be, um, you know, don't be confused. While you are in this screen, your ship and the game is still going on. So don't, you know, go to this screen when you're being shot at, or you won't have a ship to come back to. Anyway, we want to change a couple of control buttons. So let's come down to options. Oh, by the way, 
moving around menus in Elite Dangerous is the same for every single menu and every single panel in the game. WASD, that's your standard gaming setup, okay, for the screen, and then Q and E for to tab uh, between different screens on a panel. So W, S, 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 okay, and hit options, and to select it, it's spacebar. Okay, D, D, W, W, controls is what we want right now, spacebar. You are going to be spending a lot of time on this screen. Uh, unlike other games, which a lot of your uh, controls are hard-coded, you can adjust absolutely any setting in the game. Uh, to suit your own personal needs. You can, in fact, uh, cho choose different uh, control setups for whatever you're doing. You can have one complete control setup for combat, another for mining. And people do do that. It's a little bit difficult and you have to uh, go in and play with the files a little bit. But it's not really that complicated. Um, if I wanted to, I could switch from uh, my current joystick setup uh, I use a hot ass system to keyboard and mouse, but I'm not going to right now because then I'd have to reload my settings or um, you know save them uh, from a uh, save I have on the desktop. What we're going to do right now is come down to Flight Miscellaneous, click on it. Okay, you can use the mouse, or now I'm going to use WASD again. Toggle Flight Assist, Engine Boost. Now this is the one that we want to change, Toggle Frame Shift Drive. Frame Shift has two modes, Super Cruise and Hyperspace Jump. They are both different aspects of the same technology. Therefore, the default is that the button, J, operates both modes. That can be confusing to new pilots because they're not always sure if they should be going into Super Cruise and Hyperspace Jump. I remember my own confusion when I started this uh, for, it should be getting on close to five years ago now. So one thing that I recommend and is generally recommended for uh, all instructors in Elite Dangerous is you change this and separate these two modes. So if you want to go into Super Cruise, we're going to use the J button for that, and all you do is highlight it, spacebar to select, Super Cruise, press key, J. Okay, and it is currently bound to toggle frame shift drive, confirm. And then to engage the hyperspace, choose the key right beside it, K. Uh, you can choose different buttons if you wish. How you set up your controls is completely up to you. But the important thing is that we have separated Super Cruise and Hyperspace. And as I said earlier, I don't know how to uh, set up a controller because I've never used one, but you will do so by coming in to this uh, controls um, menu and setting it up in the same way. When you're playing the game, don't bother trying to set up all these controls ahead of time. Uh, you're going to confuse yourself really quickly. Just when you reach a, a um, instance where you need to do something, stop, come back to this control screen, and set up a button or a key. You know, in a in to blah, <laughs> in order to um, you know set up uh, that tool be it a weapon, be it a sensor, um, you know, be it a different mode, that kind of thing. Anyway, as soon as you're done making all your changes, apply them, go back to the game menu, and resume. Now, before we go on, we are going to take a look at the panels on your ship. Now, this is going to be boring. But you don't know how to do this yet, so just pay attention, and it's going to become easy really quick. You have four menu or uh, four panels on your ship that you can interact with. You have the external panel. This shows you everything that's going on outside your ship. 
you have the internal panel. This shows everything that's going on inside your ship, including the commander. You have the comms panel, which controls all your communications. And you have the roles panel, which allows you to board and operate any of the vehicles you have on board your ship. In this case, the SRV and assign crew um, to your various vehicles uh, such as the ship launched fighter. Now we're gonna go through them in order. Number one. Okay, oh by the way I should mention these are controlled by the buttons one, two, three, and four on your keyboard not the numeric keypad, keypad the um, ones at the top of your uh, alphanumeric board. Okay, so by pressing 1, it takes you to the external panel. Q and E, tabs, between the main pages. Like that. WASD helps you scroll around that page. Like that. S, D. Oh, correction. S, W, A, D. Okay. From this screen, the navigation screen, you can select all of the locations inside this system. And when you get down to here, see all these symbols that look like atoms or solar systems. That's what they are. They are separate solar systems. You can select filters of what you want to see and don't see. You can select your galaxy map and your system map. In transactions, you see all the missions you have, uh, any um, bounty vouchers you have gained, uh, any um, you know, money you have coming to you. You also find any fines you have to pay off, and it will also show you how to pay them off contacts are any contacts within your system either sh either the station you are in or approaching these are ships that are in uh, range of your sensors and these high energy FSD wakes are the wakes left by ships who are going into hyperspace a low energy FSD wake is a ship that has gone into supercruise alright so that's your external panel. Q and E to tab and they do wrap. W, A, S, D to move around and space to select it. Alright. Now take a look at this one here. Well first let's go to transactions and look at the mission that Acosta has given us. Mission Welcome to the Galaxy. Collect 10,000 credits from Pilots Federation Administration. Plot a route and hyperspace jump to the star Dromi. When in Dromi, travel to and dock at Moss and Dock to collect your reward. Now look at navigation. This is the Dromi system. You see how it's highlighted in blue? Anything with blue and showing that globe symbol has a uh, a mission element or is the destination for a mission. So if you have a mission and you need to fly to the station and you haven't found it yet, just scroll down your screen until you find the blue one and there it is. Dromi. Okay. Now, your second, let's go back to the view ahead. Your second panel is the comms panel. It's right here. It has two modes, local and system. Down at the bottom of the bar, uh, down at the bottom of the page, you will see that the chat window is highlighted in blue. While it is highlighted in blue, you can type. Okay. What you cannot do is maneuver around the um, uh, comms panel because any attempt to move around it will be translated into text. So close the panel by hitting enter. You can open it again by hitting enter. Okay, close. 
there you go. If you, we are on local right now. If I want to, uh, we are on local right now. If I want to go to system, this is the chat of uh, everybody in this star system. Okay. And I'm going to tell you right now, because I didn't before, you are now in the game properly. You are not in a separate instance. All of this chat is of people who are in the game right now and are all around you. Okay. <clears throat> so this is your chat. Uh, next tab is your email. I don't need to go into this in too much detail, but you already know how to get around it. W-A-S-D space to open it and you can close them because they're not that important at the moment these other ones you will learn over time I'm not gonna cover them right now okay hit enter to close the chat box and return to forward view by hitting two again number three is your roles panel the main thing right now that you will be using this for is to select your scarab your SRV for ground deployment. Now, right now, by hitting it, you'll notice that deploy is grayed out. That means I cannot deploy uh, my scarab. The reason for that is because I'm docked in a station and not sitting on the ground on a uh, natural body, a moon or a planet. So we don't need to worry about it right now, but when it comes time to deploy your scarab, that is how you do it. You can also, once you have pilots and a ship-launched fighter, assign the pilots to the ship-launched fighter and let them deploy and take on any bad guys. Or you can have them fly the ship while you fly the fighter. It's up to you. Okay, use three to leave that panel. Four is your internal panel. And I understand this is boring, but we're almost done, guys exactly the same thing as before it shows you several modes relating to either your commander yourself or your ship it goes from modules all the different parts of your ship that you can adjust uh, repair turn on and turn off and on that note I'm going to go down to super cruise assist here right now and we're going to turn it off because it sucks Oh, I hate that thing. It's the worst module in the game. Some people disagree. Well, I'm the instructor right now, so I say it's awful. <laughs> anyway, you can assign fire groups. I'll talk about this in a different tutorial. You can uh, look at the um, functions of your ship. Okay, any assistance modules you have installed. Your pilot preferences. We'll look at these um, at a different time and your stats. Inventory is whatever you have in your cargo hold and whatever you have in your materials bins. You can synthesize ammunition, pardon me, um, and uh, reloads for limpets, heat sinks, and a variety of other things. You need to have mats in order to do it. Your general status uh, with uh, local contacts. A playlist, which I've never used. And these are your four panels. External. Internal. Role panel. And communications. Now that we have covered those, we're going to bring the ship up to the station, floor, and prepare for departure. Okay, and um, system, system chat is a little bit distracting, so I'm going to leave it there. All right, here we are in the docking bay. Of Colo Station in Matet. The graphics are just astounding. 
We are going to be departing in a couple of minutes, but before we do that, remember this mission that we have to fly to Moss and Dock and the Dromi system. You know what? We're getting 10,000. Let's see if we can make a little bit more money. Let's go to Starport Services and I'm going to introduce you to the mission board. We're going to be doing this in more depth than another in another tutorial. Here is the mission board. All menus, you maneuver around them in exactly the same way. WASD around the page, Q and E to tab between them, and spacebar to select. On the left side of the mission board, you will see a group of people. There is one right now. You can have as many as 10 or 12 uh, that have jobs to complete. These are the jobs as they're shown up. Okay. There are many different kinds of missions that you can have and you just select one that you want to do look at it it's very important that you read every part of the mission because it can have some surprises for you if you're not ready for it and select one that you want to do now here is one down here this is an ideal career job 30,000 credits being given. It's going to draw me, but do you see this little symbol here? This starburst symbol indicates it involves a planetary landing. So you will need to fly into the um, gravity well of a planet and land. In other words, it won't be going to Moss and Dock. Let's take a look at this uh, mission. Deliver to Aiken's Hub and the Dromi system. Plan your journey via the galaxy map, da 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 Okay. Now, we could do this, but it's not taking us to Moss and Dock. On the other hand, it is going to give us 30,000 credits. So you know what? Since uh, we're going to be getting into planetary landing soon anyway, let's take this mission. And we'll drop this little package of data off. Uh, at a concession on our way to Moss and Hub. Let's go back. Now, let's go over to the transactions panel. And here is, okay, this is the one that Acosta gave us. Here is the one that we just picked up. Deliver data to Aitken's Hub. Da 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 da. Now, open galaxy map. Let's look at the galaxy map for a second. Okay, these 10 say systems are the uh, systems of the Planets Federation Zone, or the PFZ. In here, you are reasonably safe. Uh, any other place else in the galaxy, uh, more experienced pilots with uh, engineered ships occasionally like to shoot newcomers. We're we call them gankers. Why they do it, I have no idea, because where is the fun in it? But they do it. But they cannot enter the uh, Pilots' Federation zone, because once you leave the zone and land on a planet uh, outside the zone, or I should say land on a station outside the zone, and once you have ranked up one rank in any of the three uh, main types, combat, trade, or exploration, your pilot, uh, Pilots' Federation Zone license will be rescinded. A permit will be rescinded, and you will no longer be able to enter the zone. Now, I just want to stress something here. When you first start the game, these ten stations are going to seem like quite a lot of traveling to you. But I want to show you right now what the playing field is. I'm just going to back up a little bit. This far back is about the size of the bubble, inhabited space in the galaxy. Now let's look a little bit more. Take a look at that. That is the playing field of Elite Dangerous, the Milky Way galaxy. As accurately represented 
inside as possible. 400 billion star systems. We have so far mapped and charted 0.1% of them. So if you think you come in late to the game and there's nothing left to explore, we haven't even started yet. Okay. Now, let's come back to the Pilots' Federation Zone. This symbol, this blue symbol with a globe, indicates that uh, there is a mission location here. This is where you're going. Now, inside the PFZ, it uh, makes it a little bit easier on you because you can see the um, system map of a system that you haven't visited yet. Now, here you'll see we have two mission locations. We have two missions, two mission locations. Moss and Dock and Dromi 3A. All right, now let's take a look at Dromi 3A. This is the map of the planet, of the uh, planet, or in this case, moon. This is Aitken's hub. It is a city on the surface of the planet, and this is where we are going. We're going to stop here before uh, dropping into Moss and Dock. So, you have your waypoint buttons. This arrow is a straight line button. You use that for in-system. When you're traveling between systems and then to a location within another system, you use this linked waypoint icon. There. This is a multi-stage journey. Okay, it will involve one hyperspace jump and then flying to this planet. Let's go back. And we are ready to begin our mission. I always do that. Okay. Let's leave system services. And now we are ready to launch. Uh, one thing, at the moment, we are just going to be sticking with the uh, auto launch and auto dock feature of this ship. Uh, reason for that is that's the way you will be starting. I normally don't have uh, ADC but I want to keep this as true to your experience as possible. So we are going to go ahead, landing lights on, and auto launch. The ship restraints withdrawn. You are clear to leave. All right, we are away from the station and we are in space. Now before we do anything, let's take a look around at our immediate surroundings. First of all, we are in what's effectively Class D airspace around the space station. Now we're going we're going to turn back and take a look at the station. Look at that, isn't that something? Now Kolaho station is very large. It's uh, several kilometers in width. And its no-fire zone extends 10 kilometers out from its center point. Uh, if you try to deploy weapons inside this zone, they're going to get very angry at you. If you... the speed limit within its no-fire zone is 100 meters per second. And as you can see, while well, right now we're at 78, I'm going to bring it up to 100. If we go over 100, you get the speeding warning on the right-hand side of the screen, right there. Okay. Now, nobody is going to ding you for speeding. You, nobody, none of the cops are going to pull you over. But what happens is, if you run into something, like another ship, you are going to get fined. Uh, if you're speeding while you do so. So that's the only restriction of speeding. 
So, I'm going to bring it back to 100 meters per second. That's the speed limit. And while we're flying around here, let's take a look at our radar. Now, that bulge right in the middle is the docking bay we just came out of, and as you can see on your radar, there are a lot of ships inside it. Okay, there is Kalijo Station, and here are a variety of ships that are going around it. System Authority are the cops. They're the good guys. Usually. Now, anytime you see a pip on your screen, I'm just going to pause here, that is a solid square or a solid triangle, that is an NPC. In other words, it's a non-player ship. If you see one with a hollow square or triangle, that is a player. So that right there is another player and a new another newcomer to the game. Okay. Square pips are general purpose craft. They can also be uh pardon me. Are general purpose craft. They can also be combat capable, but uh, they're not designed as specifically fighters. Triangles with the point going upward are fighters or are ships with their weapons deployed. Triangles with the point pointing downward are mining vessels. With a little bit of practice, you can understand what the radar is telling you. Okay, you consider that it is showing you a sphere around your spacecraft. So if the uh, if the PIP has a, is above the radar and has a stock going upwards, then it's above you. So let's pick a target. Here's that adder again. That's the new guy. You see how he is above me. So if I pitch up towards him, I'm now pointing straight at him. Let's pick another one. That orca is an NPC and he's waiting to enter the station. Let's pick one farther away. Now that one is a little bit low and to the right. So we lower our nose a bit, turn towards him. That's how you find and line up on other ships. Now we're going to fly away. Let's learn a little bit about uh, power allocation on this ship. This panel here, with the three bars, have two pips at each bar. Okay, this is your power distributor and it allocates the ship's power to different systems. The one on the left is systems, the one in the middle is engineering, and the one on is engines, I should say, and the one on the right is weapons. By allocating more power to each of these um, bars, you get more power to um, you know, use them. So if you are getting shot at, you put more weapon or power to systems, and that will strengthen your shields. If you need to shoot, put more uh, power to your weapons, and your weapons will shoot longer and hit harder. Right now, we are moving at 99 because I took all the pips out of engines. Now let's put them all into engines and watch our speed increase. All clear. Flight control out. Okay, we have departed the um, no-fire zone of the station. To reset our pips, hit the down arrow key to balance them left and right. But, since we're not being shot at and we're not shooting at anybody, well, the pips that are in systems and weapons are not using it, doing anything, so let's put it all into engines to get a little bit more speed and performance out of her. Alright, we are ready to jump into Super Cruise. We have flown far enough away from the station 
that um, we can do so. Let's take a look at the station in the distance. There it is. Isn't she beautiful? Okay. Now, this indicator, just to the left of the radar and slightly upwards, the tiny little one, is your, it's called your compass, but it's not a compass. It's more of a pointer towards your next target. If the white dot, that is what you're lining up with, is solid, then your target is towards you, towards your front. If it is hollow, as it is now, you see that, it is behind you. So now, if I line it up in the crosshairs like this, where I want to go is directly behind me, so I will turn and that is my hyperspace jump target. That is the Dromi system seven light years away. Now, since these stations orbit planets, quite a lot of the time the planet will be behind, or the uh, target will be behind the planet, or the star, or anybody that uh, you're orbiting. If that's the case, rather than trying to fly towards it, which means you'll fly right into the planet, you're going to miss it. Now, we are missing it right now, but I'm going to pretend that the uh, hyperspace jump is obscured by the planet. So when I jump in the into Super Cruise, I'm going to do so and go around the planet the long ray. If I was to do this in uh, with thrusters in normal space as I am right now, it would take me hours to fly around that planet. But in Super Cruise, it takes seconds. So. I'm going into Super Cruise now. Frame shift drive charging. Ready to engage. Throttle up to full. And here we go. Three, two, one, engage. All right. The far... The gravity of a planet affects your super cruise. The closer you are to a planet, the slower you go. Although we are moving at an appreciable fraction of the speed of light right now, that's still very, very slow for this air spacecraft. Super cruise can take you up to 2,000 times the speed of light. I'm going to turn off my landing lights here. All right. So if you are in super cruise and you need to get around a planet, it takes no time at all. So now we're going to accelerate for a little bit. Not that we have to. We don't even have to uh, hyperspace jump from Super Cruise. I just wanted to show you about getting away from the planet. And I'm doing that specifically because uh, yesterday when I was in here, um, the target destination drove me right here was occluded by the planet. And a whole lot of people couldn't figure out how to get around the planet. Well, that's how you do it. All right. We are ready to jump to the Dromi system, so hang on to your butts, we are going to hyperspace. Frameshift drive charging. And here we go. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Witch Space. It is weird, it is creepy, it is beautiful, and it is mysterious. And it is cool. And it comes out aiming you right at the star you were jumping at. So always be ready to turn away. If you were in a larger ship, I recommend slowing down. Like for instance, a T9 uh, is a very large space truck which has the um, turning ability of a brick it also looks like a brick so if you don't slow your throttle a little bit uh, you could wind up slamming right into the star I've done that many times alright 
Now, we are heading to Aitken's Hub, and so there it is ahead of us. We're going to speed up. It is 685 light seconds out. Now, I'm going to teach you a little bit about how to fly in Super Cruise. Um, you have the Super Cruise Assist. Don't use it. In fact, you get rid of the thing. You can put something more useful in there. Now, look to the right. I'm going to slow to flight idle right now. Look at your throttle indicator on the right hand side of your radar. Okay, see how my throttle indicator is moving up and down here? Okay. The stick, the horizontal stick, is your throttle position. Okay. The large chevrons are your, is your ship's actual speed. Your ship usually travels a little bit faster than your throttle position. Now look at your target reticle. It shows you your distance in light seconds and when you're really close in uh, megameters. That's kilometers. So 250 light seconds out and 20 seconds if you are at this particular speed. Now don't worry about that um, target speed all that much. The way you use it is to set your throttle so you arrive or so that uh, speed sets to a particular value. In this case we want seven seconds. Six is five is fine. Five sometimes works. But let's set for seven and between seven and ten seconds. That will give you a good speed to approach a line width and uh, drop out at your target. Now if you're going too fast you're gonna have zoom right by it and I'll do that right now. I'll approach it too fast. See how it drops below four seconds even if I zero my throttle I'm gonna go right by my destination and I perform what is known as the loop of shame having to go around and come back again. Now I am gonna set my throttle so that we do approach at seven seconds And I will cover planetary landings in more detail in another tutorial. But for right now, you want to start your planetary landing with the um, base you're going to be landing at. That's Aitken's Hub right there, over the horizon. So that we have a nice, gentle approach. Now there it is, it's over the horizon. I'm going to turn towards it. You see you have a gold ring and a blue ring. The blue ring represents the orbital cruise minimum level. The yellow ring represents the dropout range. Place uh, your forward vector about midway between them and enter at a moderate speed. Now we're passing the sphere that the blue line represents and we're into orbital cruise. Lower until you're approximately between 60 and 100 kilometers above the ground. You can go up to full throttle for this. because now the gravity of the planet is really holding hard to your FSD. You can't go very fast. I'm gonna let this drop. Okay, we are at 90 kilometers. So we'll bring it into cruise. Now, the 10 degree arc, five degrees above and five degrees below the horizon, Is the, indicating, is the indicator to your ship's computer to apply um, full throttle and let you get around the planet quite a bit faster. I'm at 600, 700 uh, kilometers. I'm going to lower at about 250 kilometers. You don't need to know any of this, but uh, if you're learning from it, that's good. 
And we're going to drop when it's about 20 degrees below the nose. And once we hit the dropout point right here, we'll enter orbital glide. Here we go. And now we're gliding. I'm going to target Aitken's hub and set up to call in to land. From your navigation panel, go to contacts, request docking, and I can sit back and enjoy the ride. Remember, at any station, we call in at 7.5 kilometers. A good approach will put you right in comms range, otherwise you have to fly to it a little bit. And we're on a good approach. Okay, 11 kilometers out, that's not bad. We're going to slow to 100 knots. And we're within 7.5 kilometers, so I'll call in and request docking. Permission authorized. I have, I have auto dock engaged, so I'll zero the throttle and the computer will take it from there. We can look around at the other ships that are doing the same thing. Some are patrolling, some are taking off and landing. And we just enjoy the ride as we land. And we're down. Ship is on the ground, engaging docking restraints. Welcome to the facility. Now, one thing that I cannot stress mo enough is that the very, 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 very first thing you do when you land is refuel every single time. Refuel first. Okay, now we have a mission to deliver. Starport services. And we'll find the mission board again. Now, see that this time the mission board has a little exclamation point beside it. That means there is a mission here that needs to be completed. So, we tab, we move to it, space, to enter, and we go up to the courier job available, complete mission. Look at that, we just got 30,235 credits and a little bit of reputation. Most missions outside the hub uh, we'll have a variety of rewards to choose. Choose the reward that's best for you. It's not always money. Reputation can be extremely important, so can influence. They will also offer materials or goods. Choose the one that's best for you. They only have one, so we'll choose that. Alright, you see now we have a little bit of increased uh, reputation. Okay. We'll go back and we'll now finish the tra transaction that Acosta gave us. All right. And uh, that will complete this tutorial. Now, we can open the galaxy map, but we are in the same system, but we're, so we're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is go to the navigation panel, and we're going to find Moss and Dock, select it, lock it. You see, this is button is the lock button. And now we're going to fly to it. Exit the uh, station services. And we're ready to take off. Now, as you look at the compass or the pointer, you'll notice that it's below the horizon. So we'll need to fly away from the planet in order to fly to the station. So, let's auto-launch. Now, 
Now when departing a station, keep it below 100 knots and climb to a climb angle of greater than 40 degrees. Once you are no longer mass locked, that's that button that says mass locked, uh, when it goes out, you can transfer into supercruise or hyperspace if you can see the target. Okay, there it is. It's gone out, so we can go to supercruise. Frameship drive charging. now powering away from the planet. I'm going to roll so that Moss and Doc is towards us. And there you see it's on the other side of the planet. We're just going to keep this angle, move a little bit towards it, so that it's directly above us. We're climbing away from the planet. Now, I like to do a fairly gentle climb. You could just go to 90 degrees and fly straight away from it. It's entirely up to you. The farther we get away from the planet, the faster we fly. You hear the engines running up? Now look at your radar. You see there's a bunch of NPCs out there, and that right there is a player, Beanpod 1. I love the names guys give their ships. And we're flying fast enough now. That we are fully escaping the moon's gravity well. And we can now fly towards Moss and Dock. We keep the throttle at full power until um, we are 100 light seconds away and the time drops to approximately 10 seconds. You see how the, uh, as we speed up, the ETA, or the estimated time of arrival, is dropping from, it's going from seven hours down to six, five, four. As we get farther away from that moon, the faster we will travel. And we speed up until our ETA reads between 7 and 10 seconds. But, since you're still getting used to it, anything under, say, 15, 20, that's fine. You don't need to be that efficient. As you get better, um, you know, it'll get easier. Also, when we land, uh, before we finish this uh, tutorial, there is one other thing I will show you. And that is how to set your keyboard to always ensure that you're at the right speed for a super cruise approach. Now we're really moving. 17 times, 18 times the speed of light. And we are down to mere seconds on the ETA, 15 seconds. At 10 seconds, I'm going to slow down and put my throttle right there into the blue zone. Now, look over on the right hand or the left hand side of the panel. You see those two bars with the two needles moving. You approach Moss and Dock, you approach a station, or a target I should say, so that the distance and the speed needles both arrive in their blue arcs, their blue zones, at the same time. When both needles are in the blue, and you are aiming towards your target, you will be able to jump out of Super Cruise and arrive at your destination. If you don't, you'll once again miss, go right by it, and do the loop of shame, which we will all do hundreds of times. Now, as we approach it, 
I approach on an oblique angle. Never fly between a planet and the orbit of the station. The reason for that is the closer you fly to the planet, the longer it takes you. Okay, now both needles are in the blue zone. I'm facing towards my target. I can come out. And here I am at Moss and Dock. All right. Now this time, instead of letting the uh, computer do the landing, I'm going to do the landing myself just to show you how it looks. So I'm going to go up to here, turn off my advanced docking computer, and now look at my distance. I'm at 6.6 .6 kilometers away, which means I am within the 7.5 kilometer radius, so I can call in. Go to Contacts, Moss and Dock, Request Docking. Landing permitted. Press for arrival on landing pad 08. All right. I've been given landing pad 08 and 10 minutes to complete the landing. I tend to land like I would in real life. I fly a traffic pattern. I am currently in what would be the downwind leg. I call it the station leg in here because there's no wind in space. Turn my landing lights on. And although in real life I would be dropping gear and, uh, you know, approaching with the gear down, in this case, uh, what dropping gear does is slows your uh, aircraft or your spacecraft by 50%. So it is a great way to uh, change from flying in space to flying within the station. It drops you from 100 meters per second to 50 meters per second instantly. So, I am passing the threshold. We're going to come in. Uh, the mail slot has two sets of lights. Green and red. Green is right. Red is left. So you line up, especially with a smaller ship, to the right side of the mail slot with the green on your right. <coughs> And we are a couple of kilometers downrange. Oh, looks at look at that. Someone's being shot at. Okay. We're gonna turn base. That's turning 90 degrees relative to the mail slot. It does not matter at this moment uh, what direction the mail slot is in because once we're on final we'll rotate to line up with the mail slot. <coughs> Pardon me. And we're gonna line up, we're gonna fly towards it until we were almost dead center in the center of the mail slots. Right about there, we'll turn final. And you see the green lights on what we call the toast rack, which is in front of the mail slot. The green is on the right, the red is on the left, so as I approach, I am properly aligned on the mail slot. I'm going to fly towards it. Rotate. Maintain current vector, Commander. So that I am turning at the same rate as the mail slot and line up on the right hand side. I have a very small ship, so I don't need to worry about going in the center. Just fly inside, and as I cross the threshold, drop the gear with G. And we drop. Drop out of the departure. We drop out of the departure corridor into the arrival corridor, which is well above the landing pads, and make a nice, careful approach to pad eight. I'll start to slow, 
and we approach nice and slow until the precision landing point becomes visible. There it is. And I come to a halt above my pad. Line up so I am belly down with it. And just drop down to the pad. Well done. To complete the mission, access starboard services from the menu in the center of your dashboard. Then select the mission board from the general services list on the left of the presented screen. You'll be able to hand in your assigned mission to the Pilots Federation representative here. This will formally complete the mission. All right. Acosta's done talking, and this is the end of this tutorial. There's only one thing that we need to cover first. Uh, remember, okay, first of all, refuel. Let's hand in our mission. Starport services. Space bar to enter. Go to the mission board. You see the exclamation point? Welcome to the galaxy. Complete mission. Get our 10,000 credits. Commander, you've proven that you can travel between systems and navigate the mission board. From this point on, you'll be choosing your own missions. A variety of contracts are available throughout the galaxy that require a skilled pilot. Once again, there are training missions available to practice a variety of controls and challenges. The pilot's handbook, found in the internal interface panel, also provides a wealth of advice on most professions. I'll look forward to watching your progress, Commander. Make us proud. This is Theo Acosta, signing off. Thanks, Theo. I swear, if that guy was any more Imperial, he'd have blue hair. Anyway, there's one more thing I wanted to uh, show you. And um, it involves uh, setting the proper speed for an approach at Super Cruise. So, we already know how to do this. Let's go to Escape, Options controls. Let's go to flight throttle. Right here. Space. And now we're going to look for throttle increments. And set speed to 75%. Choose a button on your um, choose a button on your um, keyboard that you want to set that to. For now, I will set it to Hmm. F4. Okay. Well, it's already at it. It's already on F4. You see that there? Okay. And what that does is, as you're flying closer to your target, uh, you need to uh, set the proper throttle in order to approach it safely. By going to 75% throttle, you will always arrive at your target with a good speed. So as you approach, hit the um, key that you have assigned. So I'll use, let's say, um, I don't know, that one. <laughs> okay, uh, all of my uh, uh, function buttons are being used, so I can't really use that. So this is just to show you. So anytime you hit that number, Okay, your speed will automatically drop to 75%, and you'll be able to make a good, smooth approach every single time. All right? So, we will now get out of this. Go back to the main menu. Yeah, I want to confirm that because I didn't want to keep it. I was just showing it to you. And we will end this tutorial. This it comprises your first hour in the game. Just basic how to look around and get around inside your ship, how to get from place to place, and uh, how to start, locate, and complete missions. We will go into greater detail uh, in subsequent uh, videos. I thank you for watching, and good luck in your flying career.